Good evening to our wonderful church family and welcome to family time. What a joy to be with you tonight. I just want to remind you that we miss you dearly. And uh, I'm just reminded uh, we're filming family time. And I remember when we first started these programs back in March, and I don't know if you guys remember, but we had Prophet Roger Teal as one of our very first guests. And this was all the way back in March. And he said on that program, I nearly melted like under my seat when he said this, because I've always known him to be a real prophet of God. But I really was praying that he missed it in the spirit on this certain program when he said, I think Bishop asked him, how long do you feel COVID-19 is going to go on? And he said, I feel it's going to get worse in June and July. Do you guys remember that? And uh, my goodness, here we are in July. And uh, well, we're still in quarantine. And I believe the prophet of the Lord <laughs> was spot on. So uh, thank God for Prophet Teal. But truly, that, that, that the Lord had shown him that is just amazing how the spirit of the Lord works and speaks to his prophets. But we just miss you so much. But again, your safety is our priority. So we're believing God that, that this COVID is going to pass and we'll all be back together again. Until then, we are enjoying coming to you and, and just delivering a word from the Lord on Sunday mornings, our prayer time together on Wednesday mornings. And of course, family time is a special time for us to be right there in your home speaking a word of encouragement to you. Bishop is progressing tremendously. I do want to give you a quick update on that. He is doing well. And uh, I am just seeing, really, he seems a lot to me in personality, in his energy, like he's getting really back to his usual self again. And uh, I'm so excited to say that and just thankful to the Lord to be able to say that. And he's doing more and more every day. And uh, he's so itching to get back here, <laughs> to get back to doing what he does best. So thank you. And tomorrow, guys, is Bishop's birthday. Yes, yes. So we're excited about that. And we just want to, if you want to take the time on the program to say happy birthday to Bishop, I'm sure he's seeing all your comments and he appreciates that. But tomorrow's his great birthday. Yeah. So, uh, so wonderful, uh, an opportunity, even in this time that we can still honor our Bishop. Yes. And for those of you that, uh, haven't had the opportunity, uh, to, to give a love gift, uh, and if you, but you still want to, you can still do that. Uh, by going to our website, uh, citychurchnola.com, and, and, or, or by uh, texting the word. Do you remember? Oh, you're trying to jog my memory now. <laughs> They're going to put it up on the screen yes, right now. Yes, just look on the screen. Because, uh, but uh, you can text this keyword uh, to 500-0809 and, uh, and so a, a love gift to our bishop for his birthday. Although Bishop's getting older, we are as well. So, you know, <laughs> you've got to like take that into consideration. Yes, tomorrow on Bishop's birthday, we will be um, spending a little time with him, a special time. And we want to present everyone that has participated. We want to just let him know, let, let him see all the love and greetings that mean so much to him. So thank you. And we have a great word of encouragement tonight on the miracle of acceleration. And I want to start out with reading this scripture and encouraging you through the word of God. In Revelation chapter 10, verses five through six says, then the angel I had seen standing on the sea and on the land raised his right hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever and ever, who created the heavens and all that is in them, the earth and all that is in it, and the sea and all that is in it, and said, here's the key, there will be no more delay. Now that's exciting to me, guys, and welcome to the program, Pastor Harvey, Pastor Leslie Campbell, Pastor Chris Davis, so excited to have y'all. That's exciting to me, where the Lord tells us there will be no more delay, because all of us, every person watching, every person on this set, have all been through things or are going through things currently 
that we feel that time has been wasted, that time has possibly been stolen from us, that there's no way we could go back and redeem times. I'm thinking of people that, that right now have gone through or are going through bad relationships, that you feel like time has been stolen from you, that that time can't be redeemed. I'm thinking about people going through sicknesses and maybe have lost their jobs or have bad experiences, disappointments, just so much in our lives that we feel like time is not on our side. But when we look at the word of God and we learn that God is in control over all things, then we know that God can redeem the time. What an encouraging word. You preached this on Sunday, Pastor Harvey, and uh, Wow, what a blessing it was to so many people to know and to understand what a revelation, how God is really in control of our lives and that he can accelerate the time and redeem the time. Amen. And the scripture you read gives us the foundation to understand what the Bible is saying. And I think all four of us here, and many listeners would agree with this as well, that we've got to go to the word of God to understand the patterns and principles of God's word. We, we, and whether it's you and I or all of us preaching or whoever it is preaching, I always encourage people, go back to the Bible when you've heard a good word, make sure it's in there. Right. Because there's a lot of creative thinkers out there <laughs> and many of them are also speakers. And yeah. you listen to stuff and you think, I'm not sure about that. Right. But the Bible is the basis of authority for our lives. If what we dig out of the Bible, the secrets of the scripture, which are revealed to the prophets, if we pull it out through the spirit of wisdom and revelation, there are deeper truths that we can embrace within our lives. And this message that the Lord gave me a long, long time ago, the miracle of acceleration, reveals one of those deeper truths. And that's where the scripture begins. It first of all convinces us, as you've said, that God is in control of all things. Yes. And then we shoot across to other scriptures that the Bible says he's the same yesterday, today and forever. So we know that whatever God is, he is consistently that. Yes. Now that's important because we understand, if we want to put it this way, we can take that to the bank. God is who God says he is. God is who the word says he is. And he can do what the word says he can do. Absolutely. And then we jump across to Amos chapter 9, where the Bible says that the day is coming. And this is the, the real core of the message. Because the day is coming means that it's not in our past, but it's in our future. So it could be tonight sometime. It could be tomorrow. But the day is coming when the Bible says that the one who sows seed and the one who reaps the harvest will be in the field at the same time. Now, we understand naturally and spiritually that in the natural world, a farmer, they plant some seed, they wait some time, and they reap a harvest. And so the only way the one who sows seed and the one who reaps the harvest can be in the field at the same time. And even more than that, the scripture in King James says that the one will overtake the other. The only way that can happen is if God reaches down from heaven and removes time from the equation. And you go from seed to harvest. And then the one who's harvesting overtakes the one who is sowing. And the one who is sowing overtakes the one who is reaping the harvest. And so this is a supernatural act yes, by a supernatural God. But because it's in the Bible, God establishes it as a pattern. Yeah. And often we talk about patterns. It's just an established truth. It remains as long as the earth remains. Mm -hmm. So my, my preface is, if it's in the Bible, and I've got faith, the Bible says to every man, to every woman, is given the measure of faith, what's stopping me from saying, Holy Spirit, right. tonight show me, where I can believe God for the miracle of acceleration in my life. What circumstance, because it is a miracle of specificity. I believe it's not something we can say, well, Lord, I'm praying in the mighty name of Jesus for all time to be removed. Right. Well, that, that's vague. God right. is not a vague God. No. He's a very specific God. And our faith is a very targeted thing that God has given us. So what is going on in my life right now? that I can apply the miracle of acceleration. Let me give you some examples. We can look at churches around the world and you can see some churches that have grown just absolutely incredibly. There's almost no explanation, right, right. but in fact there is. 
They were once just a handful of people in a little barn somewhere. Now they're 35,000 people meeting in a super stadium in one of the America's biggest cities. Well, what happened? Because that sort of growth, when monitored through usual patterns and principles, can take decades to achieve. Well, I'll tell you what happened. God reached down from heaven. He removed time from the equation. And instead of taking 20 years to realize that growth, it happened in 18 months. It's supernatural. It's sovereign. And then you say, well, why that church and not another church? That's a great question. I know you were thinking that, Pastor Chris, (laughs) but I'm going to answer that question before you even (laughs) ask it. The miracle of acceleration is all uniquely tied in to the purpose for which God created us. We cannot cherry pick the miracle of acceleration. And we cannot say, well, look, I need to lose 30 pounds. Lord, I'm entrusting you for the miracle of acceleration. Tomorrow morning when I wake up, the 30 pounds is gone. That would be amazing. That would just be amazing. So it's it's about our purpose. And of course, at City Church, we talk about purpose a lot. We understand destiny, purpose for this reason I created you. And so I think that's worth pointing out. Within the destiny, within the framework of what we're doing as a local church, where can we look? And I'll tell you what we do. God has given City Church, as a great example, a picture of 3,000 people in the sanctuary on a Sunday. There is a picture of a balcony which is not yet created, but will be. There is a picture of 10,000 people just relating to the church throughout the city and even more who've been born again because of this church. We can believe God for the miracle of acceleration in that context. Why? Because it's His will for our lives corporately and then personally. So, uh, I mean, I could talk about this till, you know, (laughs) till the cows come home. I I just get so excited about it because it is such a unique, supernatural, sovereign, God-ordained miracle. It is. It is. And here we find ourselves in 2020. I remember on New Year's Eve when the fireworks are gone off, just coming into a new decade and being like, yes, Lord. I mean, the first Sunday, Bishop declared this is the year of double. This is the decade of difference. And oh, what a difference it started out as. Now we're in July. And certainly it seems like through COVID-19 and all that's taken place this year, it does, in all honesty, to myself and a lot of people watching that Time has just not been on our side. It feels like, my goodness, we're halfway through the year now, and it just feels like, what have we done? I mean, we've been in quarantine. We've been, what would you say in times like this to myself and everyone watching? It's like, my goodness, I mean, can we just like forget 2020? Well, there are calamities that do strike the earth. And we have had on the program prophetic voices. We've interviewed people from one side of the world to the other over these months. And, you know, one thing that I hear is a consistent thread from these awesome men and women of God is that they all mention the purpose for which God has called them. If I think of what Pastor Suli said um, in Fiji, here is a man who on Sunday is speaking to tens of thousands of people in the World Harvest Center, which is a massive facility built in the round. And then there are hundreds of thousands of people that watch them live all across the Asia Pacific region. And he said what he learned out of COVID from one Sunday having that to the next Sunday to just his wife being the sole per- person in the audience watching him. <laughs> he says that God took him back to the purpose for which he was called. Yes. And I think that that is our survival key during a season of calamity. Yes. That's our survival key. Because God has given me a purpose, because God has called me, um, I'm going to survive this mm-hmm. and I'm going to come out on the other side. And there are seasons and times that we go through that are arid seasons and dry times. And for many, COVID-19 has been devastating. People have lost jobs. Their income has been devastated. Sadly, people have lost their lives, which, of course, is in in and of itself is a traumatic experience for the family and the loved ones. And again, that's where the church steps up, surrounds them with love and is caring and loving for the bereaved families. So how does this miracle of acceleration apply? People need to look at their lives in this present moment. And by the guidance of the Holy Spirit, they need to say, Father, show me. 
Show me yeah. how I can apply the miracle of acceleration into my life. Right. It's very make specific. It yeah. Make it personal. Because, because it's a supernatural act, we can't do it ourselves. Correct. See, the weight loss we can do ourselves. <laughs> okay? yeah. That we can do ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this act, we cannot exclude God from. So we have to take our faith and we've got to be guided by the Holy Spirit because then it's within his perfect will. The word of God says you have not because you ask. And when you do ask, you ask amiss. All that simply means is, is people ask outside of the perfect will of God for their lives. So they're like, hey, Lord, my neighbor's just bought a phantom Rolls Royce. I want one, too. Oh, look, my friend's just got himself a bigger house. I want one, too. Well, the question is, is that the perfect will of God for your life? It's like the pastor who is yearning for a bigger congregation. But Yet the will of God for his life was that he would be faithful to the 250 people God has called him to. God never called him to a congregation of 35,000. And if he ended up going to such a thing, it will not be the perfect will for his life. Just in the same way, the pastor who's called to 20,000 shouldn't give that up and move to a prairie state somewhere and be preaching to people under a tree on Sunday of 20 people. It's about the divine will of God for our lives. So when we connect that to those two together, that's when time can be removed from the equation because we are in perfect agreement with God's will for our lives. So to bring it home, people just need to say, Holy Spirit, show me. Yes. Sure. What I, is it I that I can apply also, to? With this message, you said something which really resonated with my spirit on Sunday where you said that, that God is not governed by time. God put time for man. Yes. But he's not governed by time. Right. And I think if people can get that, that truth into their spirit, it will help them during this COVID-19 situation. Because I know I've spoken to a lot of people and so many people have said to me, honestly, I didn't see myself here in May, June or July of 2020. Right. Like it's almost their life has come to a standstill. But if we understand that God is not governed by time, even though we might have been in a holding pattern, God is not. So when we come through COVID-19, come out on the other side, when things change and go back to what we understand to be normal, we have to have the confidence that what we think we have lost in this period, the time that we've lost, we might, some people might even feel that things have been stolen from them during this period. God is not governed by time. So he is able to literally take us from point A to point B in a nanosecond and not have that time. So it's not like we now have to get back four or five months of what we've lost to get to the place where we think we should be at the end of July, August or September, whatever that time restraint is going to be, because God is not governed by time. And I think that that is an encouraging point for people yes. that are going through this and maybe are becoming a bit discouraged at this holding pattern they, they find themselves in. And I, I think what you're saying just so resonates with me because in that God is not governed by time mm -hmm. he's he doesn't see time the way we yeah. see it he doesn't it's it's right. the way he operates is outside of it it's it's not a limitation Correct. to God it's a it confines us we like you said we're governed by time it, it is a limitation that we have to fit within yeah. unless God reaches in right. and pulls it and pulls time out of the equation as you said and I think that is so uh, powerful to me because otherwise it's illogical. I can't fathom it with my Correct. rational Correct. mind. I, 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 don't, I don't understand it with my right. rational mind. Like you said, you said that, right? It, it is a supernatural thing, but that says to me that it is the power of God, the, the possibility of God. It, things that are impossible with man are possible with God. And, and so then I have to realize, wow, Lord, OK, I can't put that limit on you. You're able to do so far beyond what I can even fathom. And right. he does it. I mean, there's so many stories in the Bible uh, that that even speaks to this. I, I, the one that has always 
uh, spoken to me was, was Joshua was fighting a battle. Mm-hmm. And he says to the sun, stand still. <laughs> That's <Try> true. That. <laughs> That's true. That's a good one. Time stopped and gave the armies of Israel yeah. the ability to, to prevail in the battle. Right. And, and I mean, there's so many others, so right. many other examples. I think as we mature in our Christian walk, that is one of the greatest things that we can learn to discern what it looks like in the natural and what it actually is. Because sometimes what looks like in the natural is so contrary to what it actually is in the spirit realm. And when you learn to navigate that and discern that, it's just amazing how, you know, the Bible says the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And I mean, get used to it. I know I'm not the bearer of good news tonight, but get used to it because for the believer, the enemy is always, always on the attack mode against someone who stands firm on the word of God, who stands firm on their faith. But he cannot achieve anything when we walk in the spirit, when we walk by faith and we understand that, hey, it may look right now like, man, I've lost my job. It may look like I'm going through this. It may look like the devil stole this from me. Time is just not, I've lost so much time. I've lost so much. But in the spirit, I remember Pastor Harvey, um, when I was going through a really, really dark season and um, just, I I would say I was complaining. I, I don't even think I was praying. I think I was complaining to God and I didn't even realize that God hears our complaints. He not only hears our prayers, but he really hears when we're just moaning and begoning. And so it was a moment for me like that and uh, just talking to the Lord. And I remember he talked specifically back to me and said, the latter house shall be greater than the former house. And when he said that to me, it was like a moment in the spirit that I went from complaining and feeling sorry for myself to like, revolutionized. I mean, strength came into my body. Faith arose in me. And I said, that's it. No matter what I'm going through, the latter house is going to be greater than the former house. That's redeeming the time. That's a supernatural acceleration, how the Lord can bring us through things. And although it may look bad for you right now, my friend, The Lord will redeem the time. The miracle of acceleration, only in a supernatural sense, the Lord has that for you today, no matter what you're going through. And it is such a message of hope. I've, 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 I said on Sunday, it's been 40 years since I've been preaching. And if I look back and reflect, if there is a single word that would contextualize, and, and that in itself is a big word like marmalade. <laughs> if, there's a, if there's a single word that would contextualize what I speak about, yes. it's always got a message of hope in it. Mm. It has to have, has to. because the God that we serve, yes. hope is an anchor to our soul. And the miracle of acceleration, what it does for a lot of people, the scripture that we talked about where the Bible says that God can restore the years that the locust, the canker worm and the palmer worm, a lot of worms there that have taken from you. Yes. So people that come into the kingdom late in life, I preached this message yes. once at a, at a conference in Atlanta and a gentleman came to me who had just received the Lord uh, a short while earlier and he was in his 60s. And he said the moment that scripture was released into the atmosphere, and this is why it's an apostolic word, something caught in his spirit and he realized, hey, I might be 65 years of age and I might have not lived my life for God up until this point, but God is able to reach into my past. He's able to bring my past around and make it become a servant to my future. And that just quickened something in his holy, in the spirit for him. The Holy Ghost ministered him at that moment and he literally came alive. That was his spirit on the inside, recognizing the truth and realizing the miracle of acceleration gives such hope to people. And that's what the message they should get from now with COVID-19. Whatever we sense we've lost, if it's time alone, God is able to reach down and to restore to us that time that we think we have lost. I had a lady talk to me um, about the message and she wasn't quite grasping the truth about it. 
<laughs> and I was thinking, how do I explain to her um, in simple terms that she can understand it and really grasp the truth? Was this your mother again? Honey, I, I didn't want to say it was my mum, but what can we say? You know her so well. But the Lord gave me um, something very simple, which helped me understand for myself in a greater measure. But he said to me, what is the difference between a miracle and a healing? And I thought to myself, now that's a good point, because a miracle is if you are sick, and you used an example on Sunday when you preached the message about the gentleman with the broken arm. Now that was our bishop from South Africa, and I was with them on that wow. trip. He fell down a flight of stairs, and I mean, he was adamant. He was not, we just got him home from the hospital of getting the cast <laughs> put on it. He said, I am not going to church tomorrow to pray for the sick, because it was a healing crusade with a cast <laughs> on my arm. So he literally cut it off. So the miracle is, like you explained, if he had done what the doctor said, four to six weeks, that bone would have healed. It would have knit and it would, they would have taken the cast off and he would have been healed. So the, the miracle of it was God taking the four to six weeks out of that healing process. So he went from broken arm to literally that evening, fixed arm. Yes. But if he had chosen to listen to the doctors and not had a word from God, because this doesn't, this is not for everybody. You have to know that God is telling you to do that. He wasn't being foolish in what he did. He knew God had given him a word and God took the time out of the equation, out of that four to six week healing period. And there's nothing wrong with waiting the four to six weeks. But it's that miracle, that key, the miracle of acceleration where God gives you the word and takes time out of it. And I was able to explain that to the lady. And she said to me, now I understand. It was a, it was and a that's revelation. Say, it's a miracle of specificity because God's removing time. This is different and people need to understand the nature of it. If someone is fighting a terminal disease, right. or take me, I had, uh, it wasn't terminal, but it, was, it, it damaged my body. I had severe rheumatoid arthritis as a kid. My joints were all bent and buckled. And now that's got nothing to do with acceleration. That was a miracle of healing. Yeah. God reached down, touched my physical body and changed the circumstances of my life completely. Instant. So understanding the nature of the miracle of acceleration wow. is unique. It is a removal of time from the equation in alignment to your destiny. Why? At the end of the day, to glorify our Father, right. which Amen. is in heaven. So I want you to make this very personal tonight. I want you to just reach out to the Lord and say, Lord, I believe, I know you can reach in. You have the ability to reach into my specific circumstance in my life and remove time from the equation. Only you can do it, Lord. Father, touch your people in the name of Jesus. I pray specifically to someone watching that you're single and you've been single a long time and you have actually thought that that time and season of bringing someone into your life that it's past. But I want you to know that there's an acceleration coming and you just watch and see someone, the Lord is sending someone, the right person into your life and your life is just going to prosper and grow. Just be encouraged tonight in the name of Jesus. The Lord is doing great things. Father, redeem the time. For everyone watching, Lord, whatever time, whatever they feel has been lost, Lord, you can do it in Jesus' name. We trust in you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Well, it's been an awesome night. Thank you guys so much. And I pray that you've been tremendously encouraged. And just look up to the Lord tonight. Look up to him because he is the author and the finisher of our faith. Have a blessed and prosperous week. Thank you for tuning in to Family Time. You can follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram at City Church NOLA or visit our website at citychurchnola.com. Tune in to our services via live stream on Sundays at 10 a.m. And you can also join us for morning prayer every Wednesday at 7 a.m. and Family Time every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Until next time, have a great week.